Uh, hey, we're going to definitely start before, you know, it would be a rivalry here, all right? <laughs> so it's always good to be here. Uh, thank God uh, for the opportunity. I hope all of you had an awesome Thanksgiving, right? And yeah, some of you may be still eating on that meal, right? You know, today is the last day, right? Or you're going to give it a couple more days, all right? <laughs> so we thank God for being here. Thank God for my family being here with me. Yeah, my daughters, my wife, and my little son. You know, so we thank God for them being here with me as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We give you honor and we give you the glory for being such a wonderful God. We thank you for the hope. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the freedom. We thank you, God, for just allowing us to be here. And I ask, God, that you will bless every individual in this place, that, God, that we will not leave out the same way that we came, but, God, that we'll leave restored, renewed, uplifted by your word, that you allow your word not to hit the ceiling nor the ground, but enter within the hearts of your people. We thank you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome those that are watching via uh, internet. So I want to talk to you about this morning, and if I would use for a subject, it would be give God your unfiltered emotions. Give God your unfiltered emotions. Our emotions are influenced by a variety of factors especially when we are faced with rejection, betrayal, loss, abandonment, death, loneliness, unemployment, injustice, loss of income, or even depression. When there is a significant emotion distress or pain or grief, we tend to do certain things. Maybe some of you disconnect from people by always saying, I'm okay. How many of those, how many of those people in here? I'm okay. Trying to hide our emotions instead of confronting them. Say, Lord, help me this morning. <laughs> Or maybe you are the individual that fake it until you make it. You know, some giggles out there like, yeah, you know, right, Jane. Our way of pretending everything is fine. When someone asks, how are you doing? You immediately say what? Fine. So you walk around smiling while hurting inside. Or you may be the individual that keep busy. How many busy bodies in here? <laughs> you keep busy or you distract yourself with things that have a significant impact on you emotionally and spiritually. As a, as a way to avoid and distract yourself from your inner issues. You turn to drugs. Turn to porn. Turn to alcohol, or you turn to shopping. How many shoppers in here? <laughs> or you may turn to becoming a workaholic when you're going through things in your life. And if, if we find ourselves operating within any of these categories, we're at a place emotionally where if we don't do something, we're bound to end up with an, an emotional breakdown. Say emotional. An emotional breakdown. And here's why this is not pointing the finger, and I don't want you to think that I'm here to point the finger at anybody because we all have issues, right? But why I feel that this is important here this morning, my advice to you, if you don't hear anything else this morning, my advice to you is to give God your unfiltered emotions instead of dealing with them on your own. Say, Lord, help me right now. So we've been taught in this society to deny our emotions to deny our hurts 
and to deny the trials that we encounter. To avoid showing weakness. How I many you know that that's where we live? You can't show weakness. But what I love, God invites us. He invites us to cast our cares and our worries and our burdens on him. This is what the word of God says in 1 Peter 5 and 7. This is just a, 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 a scripture that Peter says. He said, cast what? Some. Some of y'all looking at me like, it says what? Cast what? Oh. All your worries and cares to who? God. For he cares what? About you. He cares about each and every one of us so that we won't end up in an emotional what? Breakdown. He said, give me all of it. And how many of you know that sometimes we give him some things? We give him some things. But he said, give it all to me. So let's go to the word of God. The word of God shows us how we place our faith and trust in God by pouring out our hearts and emotions. So let's go to uh, Psalms 142, 1 through 6, and then we're going to skip and go to Psalms 13, 5 through 6. It may sound like we're, going, seem like we're going backwards, but it would make sense at the end. And what I love about this, it is the, the, the laments. And uh, when you look at this scripture, and which means mourning out loud. When you look at this scripture or this, this book here, it is a form of worship. And as you read and you study, we see that this psalm is uh, basically craziness, dissertation. Uh, it, it, is so, it is so wild, if you will. It was a, a, a time when David was in a wilderness. He had a wilderness season of depression. He had a wilderness season of pain, suffering, and despair. And how many of you know that some of us go through some stuff in our lives? We see as you read this, when you're going through some things, there's a sense of angriness and there's a sense of resentful and, and self-pity and complaining when you go through some stuff. How do you complain <laughs> when you go through some? <laughs> so it's, it, it, we see here that God, he said, give me your heartfelt what? Complaints. So the word of God says this. Let's read. It says, I cry out to who? The Lord. I plead for the Lord's mercy. He said, I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles. And then it goes on and it says, when I am overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn wherever I go. And then it says here, it says, my enemies have set traps for me. And then verse four says, I look for someone to come and help me. But no one gives me a passing thought. Have you ever been through some where you felt like nobody cared about you or thought about you? And then the Bible says, it goes on and says, no one will help me. No one cares a bit what happens to me. And then verse 5 says, then I pray to you, O Lord, I say, you are my place of what? Refuge. I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. And then six says, hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors. And then it says, for they are too strong for me. And let's go to Psalms 13, a few verses in Psalms 13. And we're going to read just two verses. And what I love about this Psalms 14, uh, 13, people always say, don't question God. How many of you heard that? Well, you said, don't question God. But here in this chapter, David, he decides to ask God a question because he is frustrated. And how many of you have been frustrated in your life where you just, you, you had to tell God like it is? <laughs> or maybe you were the person that didn't because you were afraid to get struck down because they always told you, don't question God, right? <laughs> it depends on what category you're in. And that's why I believe God wants us to pour out our emotions on him. Negative emotions, I want you to hear this. Negative emotions aren't indicators of unbelief. Negative, what? Emotions are indicators of unbelief. So what I love about David, he, he, God gives us the freedom 
to give all our cares and our emotions to him. How do you know? The Bible says this in verse 5. It says this, but I trust what? In your unfailing what? Love. And then it says, I will rejoice because you have rescued me. And then six said, I will sing to the Lord because he is what? Good to me. Having questioned God, David now praises him, which is kind of confusing. How can you move from asking God how long to praising him and adoring him as you're in your dilemma? That's what I think is, is, is quite strange when you read this. But David moves from pleading to a place of renewed hope. And maybe you're here this morning, you say, well, Shane, it's okay to express unfiltered emotions to God, but how do I form it in my life and make my life to worship God when I'm feeling upset, when I'm feeling angry, when I feel like I want to give up, when I feel like I want to throw in the towel? What do I do? Number one. I wanted you to write this down. How do I give God my unfiltered emotions? Number one, let God hear your complaints. Say it with me. Let God hear your complaints. Now, David, he said, I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all of my troubles. And I want you to understand, a complaint to God is a heartfelt plea. In spite of the fact that a lot of people complain among themselves about things, they fail to take those same complaints to God and pray about them. Have you ever been there? Some of y'all was complaining about the food on Thanksgiving, right? (laughs) They don't make it... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, some of y'all, the ones that laughing, the ones that complained about the food on Thanksgiving. I know I should have made it. They didn't know the recipe. Right? Complaining about it. <laughs> That's some of y'all. So during a time of depression, we see that David learned to pray and to express his complaint to God so that he could find what? Peace. And how many people in here need some peace? Have you ever poured out your complaints and all your troubles to God in prayer? Do you tell him uh, everything that bothers you? Do you tell him that you hate someone? I don't want to get struck down, Shane. I, I can be that blunt. Say, yes. Did you tell him that, God, if you don't help me, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I don't know if I'm going to slap somebody or hit them, but Lord, if you don't help me, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I mean, have, have you ever prayed? And what I love about the book of here, he said, take all your complaints. That means it doesn't matter what you're going through, what you're faced with. If it's about your marriage, take it to God. If it's about your income, take it to him. If it's about your knucklehead children, take it to him. Yeah, how many of you know that they are knuckleheads, right? I don't know. Uh, knucklehead children, right? <laughs> Say, Take the complaint to God. (laughs) You have to take the complaint. We need to share our doubts, our pain, and our trials with God. Because what? He is a healer, and he's a deliverer, and he is what? A way maker. And how many of you know that when you complain among each other, it may not go anywhere? (laughs) It may make the people that you're complaining to even what? Angry. (laughs) But how many of you know that God, and you thank God that when you take your complaint to him, he doesn't get angry? You can be unfiltered. You can tell them how you feel. You feel like doing something. It doesn't matter how you feel. You can take it to who? God. So tell yourself, say, take your complaints to God. Number two, you write this down. How do I give God my unfiltered emotions? I not only take my complaints to God, but number two, pray to God for help. Ooh, somebody say, yes. Somebody back there say, yes. Tell yourself, say, pray. Come on, say, pray Pray. to God God. for help. help. David said in verse, in Psalms 142 and 6, he said, hear my cry. 
I am very low. Have any of you been low in life? And then he said, rescue me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than me. Have you ever been through some things that were stronger than you? Wave your hands and say, yes, Lord, it's me. Are you, are you one of those people that, who finds it difficult to ask for help when you need it? Raise your hand if that's you. Be honest. Thank you for being transparent. You're the one that you're so dogmatic, so bullheaded, that you don't like asking anybody for help. Maybe this Thanksgiving, you took all the tables from the basement and did the food and everything. You didn't ask no help for no help. Now you're worn out. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? You don't want nobody touching anything. <laughs> Just ask for help, right? There comes a time in our lives when we reach our breaking point, and if we don't ask for help, we may what? Suffer. And how many of you want to suffer? Nobody want to suffer, right? But I, David cried out for help from God because he felt like he was in a pit that was consuming him spiritually and also mentally. And how many of you know that you've had some things that you've gone through that seemed like it consumed you in your mind and also in your spirit? You've been there. We've all been there. Have you, have you ever felt overwhelmed by some of your stuff that you've gone through? How many of you have been overwhelmed? I'm talking about the stuff that overwhelmed you in your mind, in your spirit. You try to be happy, but you can't be happy because you're what? Overwhelmed. Maybe that is you. So my question is to you, what do you, what do, you do when you need needed help? Do you ask other people or do you ask God? And how many of you know that sometimes we fail to ask God for help? Some of us, we have a problem asking God for help. It's nothing wrong to say, God, help me overcome depression there's nothing wrong for God, for God to help you. Ask God to help you. If you're depressed and you're going through something mentally, just say, God, help me. If you're going through a failed marriage, instead of looking at me, don't get me wrong, counseling is good. Say, yeah, say that's right. right. Yeah, amen. Nothing wrong with counseling. But we look to get counseling from these counselors, which is nothing wrong with it, but have we, did, did we ask God to help our marriage? Some of us fail to ask God for help. God, can you please help me, Lord, to be patient? How many of you need patience? <laughs> it's, it's all of us, right? We all need patience, right? Help me to be patient as I go through this because I'm about to pull all of my hair out of my head because I am not patient with what I'm going through. Have you asked God to help you? I need you to help me from overcoming, to overcome the hurt and the pain that I've encountered in my life. Lord, help me. Have you asked God for help? Do you know that prayer can keep you from succumbing to despairing thoughts? It doesn't have to be you got to get on your knees to pray. Every day I'm in the car praying, Lord, help me in my mind. Help me to be a better man. Help me to be a better father. Lord, Lord, help me. Help me to do this. Help me to make the right decision. Lord, help me. Every day, every moment, every second, every hour, I need your help. Have you asked for God's help? So for you to give God your unfiltered emotions, you have to pray to God for help. Number three, write this down. How do I give God my unfiltered emotions? Number three, speak God's truth. Say it with me. Say, speak God's truth. We see that David said, then I pray to you, O Lord. He said, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. 
this is the next part of, of, of a prayer that he, he, he exposes himself. And how many of you know that it takes, it's a journey? It doesn't come overnight for you to be worshiping God or praising him because of what you're going through. It is a journey. But we see that David, he's pleading and he's asking and he's speaking the truth uh, are the steps that he took in his life. David says that God is his place of refuge. Say place of refuge. It is, a, it is times of despair that David speaks the word of God as a guide and a comfort. He speaks his word as a guide and as a comfort. How do you know that? Because he said, Lord, I will say, he is my refuge in my fortress. If you look at Psalms uh, chapter 30, he said, Lord, you are my refuge in my fortress. He spoke the word of God. When you are struggling through a difficult time in your mind and in your emotions, do you speak God's word over your life? Or you just say, it is what it is. I mean like that. I mean like that. Lord, I know that this situation irritates me, but I know everything works together for the good of them who are called according to your purpose. How many of you have some stuff that irritates you? Like I'm talking about the problems. Are you putting God's word on it? Lord, he said, in spite of everything I'm struggling through in my life, you promised to keep my mind in perfect peace, who mind is stayed on you. That's what your word says, God. So don't be afraid to speak the truth and promises of God in your life. And what is that? It is the word of God. It's nothing wrong with opening up the word of God and speaking his word over your life. Tell yourself this week, speak the truth over your life. Let me tell you why. Is because his word does not return unto him what? Void. How many of you have some liars? Oh, you probably want this. I don't know. You probably, who's, how many liars in here? I'm just playing. But how many of you know that someone lied to you and said that they were going to come through, but never did? You ever had somebody made promises? But what I love about God is when you put his word on your life. He said, my word cannot return unto me what? Void. What, do you, what are you saying, Shane? He's saying that basically I have to come through with my what? Word. How I many of you thank God that he has to come through? And number four, this is the last one. This is the last one. How do I give God my unfiltered emotion? Number four, put your trust in who? Put your trust in God. How many of you have some trust issues? How many folks got trust issues? I mean, can't trust nobody, right? Can't trust nobody to drive. Can't trust nobody to pay. You trust just nobody. <laughs> how, many trust is, how many folks got some real trust issues? Raise your hand, all right? It's hard because some folks have broken your trust, right? But how do you, he said, put your trust in God. This is what David declares to God at the end of his emotional battle, at the end of his, his depression, at the end of uh, th this life that he's going through, that he is rocky. He said, this is what I'm doing. I'm putting my trust in God. Now David discovered the light at the end of the tunnel. Now David is able to praise and trust God as he placed his what? Trust in him. God's unfailing love taught David. How many of you thank God for his unfailing love? It taught David to trust in him, and now he's not only trusting him, but now he's at a place in his life where he's praising him for saving him from his trouble. Ooh. Think about where God has brought you from in the past. And he's saying, why is it that you have trust issues with me? I brought you through in the past. What makes you think that I can't bring you through 
the stuff that you're going through in your future or you're going through right now. During difficult times, do you trust God? When you go through some battles in your life, do you trust him? And how many of you know that sometimes we struggle with that? I'm here to let you know that I have no doubt that people will fail you. But how many of you can say that God has never failed you? People failed me, but God, he what? Never failed me. Now, will he come on your time? Say no. (laughs) <laughs> Let's get that correct. <laughs> because he don't come on your time doesn't mean he failed you. He just has the right time to show up, which is different from what? Your time. Ooh, how many of you thank God for that? <laughs> Say, God, thank you for your own time. I want you to know this morning, and I'm closing, there is only one way for you to handle your unfiltered emotions And that is to cast all of your anxiety and your burdens upon who? God. This is the only way to manage. Say manage. Manage the things that you go through. So my question is to you before I even close. How would your life be if you were to make your unfiltered emotions known to God and allow him to work on you? Where would you be? How far would you be? Say, Lord, help me with my unfiltered emotions. Emotions. I'm here to tell you, don't allow your emotions to get the best of you. Don't allow what you go through make you feel that you can't give God your unfiltered emotions, how you feel. Just give it to him raw. I found out when you are transparent, when you are raw and you're honest about things, that's when God shows up. Your prayer doesn't have to be all perfect. Your prayer doesn't have to, thank you for the bees, the birds, and the flies, and the dandelions, and the sky that is blue for the rug that I'm walking on. It doesn't have to sound perfect. As long as you're raw and you're real with God, that's the only way that deliverance can take place. Come on, give God some praise. Clap your hands, give God praise. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And I don't know what it is that you may be going through, what you're battling. And how many know that this is the worst season for some people? Because they either lost loved ones. It's sometimes depressing to even think about some of the, the season. Sometimes can be, be depressing or joyful. Never look down on people that may be in a depressing moment. Because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're faced with. It's not peachy and cream for everybody, right? Instead, just pray for them. And I want you to be raw this week. And I want you to give everything to God. Everything you're struggling with, I need you to, you tell God, be raw about it. Give it to him. And watch God do some things in your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. You know what we're all going through. You know what we're all faced with in our minds, in our spirits, in our hearts. And I pray, God, that you will allow those that are going through in their hearts, in their minds, to be renewed, to be restored, to be refreshed. I pray, God, that you would deliver 
pray that you are purged and purify, and that, God, that you are turn their situation around. We thank you, God, because we know that some have been going through some stuff that have hurt them mentally, spiritually, maybe physically. But at the end of the day, God, I pray that you allow them to humble themselves even this week and to give their unfiltered, their raw emotions to you so that it won't take them out. I come against depression. I come against men mental breakdown. I come against anything that may try to uphold them, Lord God. I come and I pray that you will break the chains of depression upon your people. Whatever they're worried about and concerned about, full of anxiety, I pray that you will break it in the name of Jesus. Give them peace in their minds. Give them peace in their families. Give them peace in their household. Give them peace at their jobs. Give them peace in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. And we give you honor and we give you glory. The tears that they're, they're shedding right now, I pray that you would touch them right now where they're at, God. They're concerned about a loved one. They're concerned about their children. They're concerned about their health. They're concerned about their finances. They're concerned about their future. I pray that you will give them comfort in the name of Jesus. We thank you. And I speak healing over your people. I pray that you will refresh them in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. And say, Lord, I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what you've already done on my behalf. And not only on our behalf, but on our family's behalf. I come standing and lifting my hands and say, Lord, do it. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer at the end of the